Podcast. I'm Jana from Pearl Together, and this is Karen Real from Poppy's Pom Poms.com. I'm so excited to have you today on the Pearl Cast, my little interview. Except Thank really, you. we just chat. It's not really an interview. We just visit. Not really. Yes. We're just knitting together. Yes. Except I don't have any knitting in my hands at the moment, which I was unprepared. It's okay. I was prepared enough for both of us. Because I have about 12 whips, but they require more concentration than I'm able. To. I can't multitask that well. Yeah. Well, I'm going to try. And if I mess it up, then I'll just frog it. It'll be okay. Yeah. And I gesture too much also when I'm talking. <laughs> so <laughs> I am so excited to have you. You are from, you're from Canada over yep. in near Toronto or Ottawa. I mean, Ottawa is the capital, but you yes. just told me that you're outside Toronto, right? Yes, so I generally live in Ottawa, but because of COVID, I'm with my family near Toronto. Yes. Well, it's cool that you're able to be with them, though, instead of, yes. yeah. Absolutely. So I first became, a, I first heard of you when I listened to Anne's podcast, Anne from I Thought I Knew How, and I'll link to her podcast with you down below. And then you sent me an email, and that was lots of fun, and we set this up, and I'm excited to have you and learn all about Poppy and the pom-poms that you make and the <laughs> this is my best part <laughs> I know what I have to ask you about this because and and the reason I haven't started knitting this I'll explain later but okay. I have analysis paralysis it's like one of those things where you have this like lovely little skein and you're like wait do I want to do it with that well I don't know is it worthy is that pattern worthy of this yarn and then I fall down the rabbit hole of looking at patterns and then I like I can't decide. <laughs> yeah. And when you have, you know, limited yardage of this one special thing, I don't know what to do. <laughs> A hat or mittens because they would be so warm. True. Usually on the farm when we wear mittens, I have felted wool mittens and then I have these leather shell coverings. Right. Because it's very, very cold where we live. And so then the leather, like if there's frost on the gate, like going into the corral, for example, um, or if your hands are a little wet from filling the stock tank, then you have the leather shell. So it doesn't, if you touch something frozen and you're a little damp, you don't want to stick. No. So yeah, so I probably wouldn't wear this like just for daily. I mean, this is more special than just your daily livestock chores, you know? Okay. I think that it would be worth a test though to put them inside the leather to see how warm they are. Be fantastic. Do you think 125 yards is enough for like big hand people? Yeah, for mittens, yeah. You think? Yeah, I think you can do it. That adds more <laughs> complication to my process. <laughs> There's a lot of really great mittens out there. I know. And I really wanted to do like, well, I have two teenage daughters. So then I'm like, well, if I make a hat, you guys could share it. And they're like, right. So now trying to find a pattern that <laughs> I wanted to do this fantastic, uh, like a beret. And yeah. I knitted, I knitted the top of it. It's actually a German doily pattern. And I knitted the top of it out of other DK because I don't okay. want to do this and then frog it if it doesn't work. And sure enough, it was going to be way too much yardage. And I'm like, damn it. <laughs> Yeah, but the best part about when you frog with Poppy's yarn or with Poppy's fur, it gets fluffier. Oh. So remember that. So the more you use it, the fluffier it gets. Yeah. So for viewers that aren't familiar with your website and Poppy, you're not Poppy, you're Karen. Poppy, okay. ex explain us to us who is Poppy. Okay, wait, I'll just get her. I have to wake her up. Poppy. She's like, no, mom. Come. Not just one foot. Come. You're good. <laughs> you sit in the bed? Hi. Hi, look, Pop. Hi, Poppy. I even brought cheesies in so she would pay attention. And she heard me too. Is that an actual Cheeto? Yeah. <laughs> I want one. <laughs> nice oh the only way she'll listen food yeah she's gonna lay down and get like orange cheeto dust all over your bed <laughs> my brother's room so it's gonna oh. be <laughs> awesome okay. that's all right i don't know oh so 
she is a Samoyed, right? Yes. Yes. Am I pronouncing that properly? Uh, some people say Samoyed and some people say Samoyed. You say what you like. Okay. Well, she's <laughs> lovely either way. And and then, so you spin her fur. With... I, I send it to a mill and they okay. spin it. I don't know how to spin yet. I'll have to learn it one day. One day when there's free time. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I'm not the thing is I can spin, but I tend to knit more than I spin. So. Okay. Yeah. I'll try it one day. Well, I'll probably take a class. But let's <laughs> but let's um let's make it clear to the viewers though, like all of the yarn that you produce is not just from Poppy because she'd be no. bald otherwise. I mean, there's no way one little dog could produce right. the volume of yarn that you so it started with just Poppy. Yeah. So when I was young, we had a Samoyed and or Samoyed, and her name was Seiko. And my mom would always tell us about how she was gonna spin yarn, and then she never did. So <laughs> she probably was busy raising kids, right? right? So I got a Samoyed while well, I got Poppy in 2015. And so I said, I'm going to spin her fur into yarn. And because we have Google now, and there was no Google in the 70s, right. I found a mill that would do it for me. Wow. Yeah, so the first bit was just pure poppy, uh, blended with 25% merino. Otherwise, it wouldn't hold together as well. Or right. it would be I'm poppy. sure there's not, uh, there's not the grip, or because it would, right. slip. it would just slip apart too easily. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, you know, because you're a spinner. <laughs> and particularly like when you're using a drop spindle you want yeah. stuff that grips a little bit otherwise woo, yeah yeah it, you just can't <laughs> so it's blended so this particular yeah. is blended uh 20 75 percent samoyed or samoyed yeah. sorry whichever you prefer 25 <laughs> percent merino and yeah. this is this is fantastic it's it's so like so soft I could never figure out how to explain to people how soft it is without touching it, right? It makes all the difference when you touch it. It's I know, because we waited, we waited for you, for the post, yes. for you to send me this, and I'm you like... You need to touch it in order to really talk about it. I just want to, like, have a little nap right here. Yeah, it's really good. Puppy's licking my arm. <laughs> Not so good. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> so that's fantastic. This is a three ply. It's DK weight, 125 yards, and it's only two ounces. So it's very fluffy and lightweight for only being two ounces. Yeah. But but that's about normal because a DK in wool would be about 250 yards for four, three okay. and a half to four ounces. So Perfect. it's just it's fantastic. So I have this dilemma now: what to make with it? I thought, oh, I was going to be all have my finished garment before this interview, and then I'm like, can't do so much. <laughs> so I have to pattern surf for like a one skein hat that I would I mean oh, yeah I want to my kids would love it so I'll make something for the girls because they'll enjoy that yeah they will really like it. it's so soft have you when I know on your website you have these and then links are down below if people want to shop and then you also have some that are colors as well like you've died yeah, so I, I tried my hand at dying I still try my hand at dying it's fun <laughs> yeah. um I really like the idea of botanical dyeing yeah I should start by saying so samoyed fur like on poppy the dirt won't stick to her fur so like she goes playing in the mud which she does and then she comes home goes to bed in the morning she's perfectly white again the dirt just falls off her fur wow so the, that property whatever that magic samoid fairy thing it is <laughs> makes the yarn not really take a lot of dye right right so the I colors see. are really muted right so i've been doing i did some botanical i did some acid dyes and it's really fun mm -hmm. the colors that come out are pale and beautiful like pale pink from avocado is just gorgeous yeah so I've i had no <laughs> idea i had no idea that avocado made pink it's so weird. It's so weird, but it makes the most beautiful color, like a really soft ballet pink. So how did you, you mentioned how you got started with this and obviously you knit. So did you yeah. learn to knit, did you learn to knit from your mom? Oh, apparently she tried to teach me when I was young, but. <laughs> it's sick. 
No, it didn't stick at all. So uh, when I was 19 or so, I had this boyfriend and his mother and his grandmother knit. No, no, no. Sorry, they crocheted. And I wanted to play too. So they taught me how to crochet. So then I crocheted for a couple of years and I work with this bunch of women. And one of them said, oh, you need to learn to knit. And I was like, okay. So she taught me how to knit one day at work. And now I was probably 20. So like 25 years ago when I, well, I'm not necessarily a knitting snob. I guess I'm starting to be more of a knitting snob that I have this endless supply of poppy yarn. But uh, I used to learn just like I would go to Walmart and buy whatever yarn was available. (laughs) Yeah, because it was like 25 years ago, right? That's what was available. Um, And I would make stuff. But now, as I have learned more and more about yarn, I'm like addicted to soft lofty beautiful yarn right so i want because of poppy and that i knew i could make a samoid yarn somehow that's what drove me to google it endlessly yeah and see i have an appreciation for the soft lofty foofy yarn but i also really love that hearty good wool that i want to make socks out of you know that i know is going to be hard wearing and durable for, you know, in your boots in the winter, you know, and that's, yeah. So there's a place for that absolutely in my life. (laughs) (laughs) So I think, I think that's great that you, you, you figured that out and now you have this website with all this fantastic fluff going on and show us what you're working on right now. That's lovely. Okay. So actually I'm releasing this on Saturday, Bobbles. So it's so, I'm a little bit, I'm not a perfectionist at all, but I've knit so many bobble patterns in the past and I really have a hard time when the bobble is open on both sides, like at the back. So yeah, so I, for weeks now, I've been trying to figure out how to close a bobble so it doesn't have that little hole at the side. On On the wrong side, you mean? No, well, yeah. So it has a bit of a hole, but right directly beside the bobble because you make so many stitches. So I figured out how to close it. So can you just wrap your yarn, when you do the next knit stitch, can you wrap your yarn the other way? I did. Yeah. That's one of my steps. Yeah. It's genius. Well, it's it's just like the same kind of effect that happens when you have a a purl stitch that follows, that follows a cable. There's yes. There's this little extra bit of yarn that gets introduced in there, and it makes a la- it almost makes a ladder or a gap. So I've like I have a video on that where you would just wrap your yarn the opposite direction because going counterclockwise tightens it. No, going counterclockwise like you normally wrap your yarn when you're knitting yes. is okay. looser than going clockwise, and that is less distance between the stitches, and that tends to suck it up a little. And then when you knit back, uh, you just reverse the stitch orientation when you're coming back th- around the next. I feel like you're a knitting genius. <laughs> uh, no, I'm sure I didn't think of that. Someone showed me I'm positive. I'm not that, that original. <laughs> that person is a knitting genius too. <laughs> and someone probably showed them and so on and so forth. <laughs> so great. Yeah, but that's what it's about. I mean, there, you know, there's really not very much original in the world. It's just a matter of sharing with others what you pick up along the way. You know. Very important. <laughs> and um, thank God for YouTube, <laughs> right? Yeah. And everyone who didn't know that now is like, wow, she's a genius. So oh, I have a video that I learned. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so you've got your bobble closure figured out. Yes, I have my bobble closure figured out. So I'm making a bobble hat. So this pattern that you have, your bobble hat, is coming yeah. out in just a couple of days. Saturday, yeah. So I'll release it on Saturday. Well, I'll I'm link to your excited. website and you, I noticed you do have a tab for patterns. Yes. So, right. Yeah. So you have a hat on there already and that, well, right. But you have a different hat. What's it called? The Riley? Oh yeah. So that was the first hat I ever did. My son's named Riley. Yeah. So um, I knew how to knit flat things, but I didn't really know how to read a pattern or anything. And so one of my friends asked me to make a hat and I was like, yeah, of course I could make a hat. And then I'm like, how do you even make a hat? So so I just figured it out because I couldn't read a pattern at the time. This is like in the last five years. 
Okay. Yeah. So that was the first hat that I made was the Riley. Wow. Yeah. So did you knit it in the round or just do it back and forth flat and then seam it up? I did it in the round, the okay. first one. So I didn't really even know how to knit in the round at the time. I figured it out. Yeah. Then the next hat, I did it flat and sewed it up. Okay. It was easier, much easier. You think? For someone learning to knit, yes. <laughs> I guess the sewing portion, I really had to find a proper, I had to learn which way to sew it so that it was beautiful because I didn't really want to seam. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I learned that as well. Yeah. Mattress stitch will suck up that salvage edge yes. pretty well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's exactly, I've become the master of mattress stitch. I'm very good at it now. <laughs> That's awesome. Knitting in the round is way easier. I feel like it's way easier. I think now it is much easier, but right. when I was trying to figure it out back then. Not yeah. so much for you. Not so much. I would knit everything in the round now. Oh yeah, if you can. <sighs> Have you done socks? I've only just learned socks this year. Yay. So I know, I love them. So I've done a couple pairs. Um, I got a sock weight poppy yarn that yeah <laughs> so I'm working on getting more of that because I found a mill that would do it in limited quantity uh -huh. yeah so and will it, they add does it have a bit of nylon for durability yeah, that's 20 percent nylon okay and then a yeah. little merino and a little poppy yeah so it's really soft and so perfect for this kind of weather so you have several people that send you their Samoya puppy combing <laughs> Coming so, funny. so I told someone recently that I was a canine confetti collector. <laughs> <laughs> so the Samoid community is very close. Yeah. So my breeder saves all of the fur for me. And then there are a couple other breeders that I've contacted that save the fur and ship it to me. And then people who have the dogs also save it and ship it to me or give it to me when I see them. And I would think that you could amass quite a quantity for not that much postage weight. Yes. I mean, it's so, yes. yeah. So, so how, how long does it take, for example, this two ounce scale okay. would be the equivalent of like, like a bag of chips amount of okay bag of chips we're back at the bag of chips <laughs> we're really food driven aren't we <laughs> yeah. um and so yeah. i would get that much far off poppy twice a year oh wow last year i did the twist festival in quebec okay it's a big knitting fest and it was the first knitting show i'd ever been to <clears throat> that i was a vendor and it went over so well that I got a second dog. So now I have two. <laughs> What's the other one's name? Stubbs. Oh. He has like just a little stub of a tail. Yeah. So I named him Stubbs, of course. <laughs> so so is, I know? is he there? He's not here. He'll be here later this weekend. He's with my son. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And He's just over one year old. How did that introduction go? What, how did Poppy feel about that? She was really, really mad. She was so mad. But I'd say after about three weeks of growly faces, she was fine. And he was like eight weeks old. He was a tiny puppy, but she so was- he, really It was like no threat to her at all. No, she, she was, was just, just jealous, I bet. She was upset. She was mad at you. She you were unfaithful. <laughs> It's true. I fell in love with another puppy. <laughs> she didn't like it at all. And now they're totally in love. So it's good. And he gives me like twice as much fur as Poppy. Wow. Is that normal for, I mean, does do male? Yeah, I do think he gives a lot more fur. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, so tell us about the pom-pom part of the Poppy pom-pom. Oh, that was the first way back. That was the first thing we did. So that first hat that I ever made, mm -hmm. I really wanted to put a pom-pom on it and I didn't know where to get a pom-pom. So I looked on Amazon and they had like acrylic pom-poms and I've ordered them and they're just not beautiful. 
So we have a um, website that's like Craigslist here. And so I searched for fur coats. Oh. And so I found this woman who was selling a fur coat for like $85. And so I went and I bought it and I cut it into a million pieces in my kitchen, yeah. my kitchen. And I watch YouTube videos to learn how to make a pom-pom and then I made pom-poms. So, oh, yeah. So you figured out how to cut them in shapes that would lend themselves to like. Yeah, beautiful, making, perfect pom-poms. Yeah, Try and then you have hand. to sew that together out Try of like hand. the the square or the rectangle or how or the triangle or whatever shape yeah. what shape makes a pom-pom well you can make it almost any shape but the circle makes the best one then i found out uh, the proper size because fur coats are like uh, the fur itself is different with throughout the coat like the sleeves will be different than the body Oh, you mean the quality and the, the texture yeah. of the Yeah, like usually the sleeves are really puffy because right. it was the 80s. <laughs> so indeed. <laughs> yeah. Long live the shoulder pad. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we cut up fur coats in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> vacuum it up and then sew pom poms by hand. Oh. So they're all recycled fur coat so that's a great way to upcycle yeah you know, upcycle that kind of thing and not not have it end up landfill either, right or somebody's garage forever or yes. yeah yeah a lot of people just store it in their basement forever that's, yeah that's not good no so i go on the craigslist here and i buy fur coats so do people mail you fur coats yeah in fur it's crazy. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's, crazy. it's a really good. It is a fantastic way to upcycle things like that because, regardless of your feelings about trapping and you know and using that that animal, regardless of that, exactly. by the exactly. time you see it, it's been done. I mean, the deed is done. So the, it's the good, animal's been dead for thirty years. Right. It's yeah. a really it's a really good way to upcycle and carry on using that. Right. Regardless. So you have and all the pom poms. You have pom poms for sale on your website then. Yeah. So like the one that you held up just there, what, what kind of fur do you think that is? It's Arctic Fox. Wow. Yes, it's pretty popular in Canada because they live just above us. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's, um, it's not as rare as you would think to find an Arctic Fox fur coat. And so, how, so what would that pom-pom that you're holding I mean, I'm guessing that's probably what about four inches in diameter. Yeah, so we cut it about four inches, but because it's, I guess it was probably from the arm. It's really fluffy, poofy, and yeah. so that's and so what would that sell for on your site? Twenty dollars, and that's Canadian. Canadian. Yeah. Okay. So depending on the exchange rate, I mean, whatever yeah. PayPal does that for you. Absolutely, it does. Yeah, right. that's fantastic, and I'm sure you have different. I yeah, mean, we have different than what you find in your exactly. In your, salvage travels that's yeah that's fun that's kind of like I, i've been to the thrift store and i found sometimes you can find sweaters and then unravel them yes. you know rescan the yarn and steam it and occasionally you can find cashmere that way Ooh. and then make hats i mean i haven't found cashmere yet but i know of other people that have yeah but you know, I just kind of keep my eye open and see what's absolutely. It would be so nice. Or even like really bulky, those big bulky sweaters from the '70s. And if they're 100% wool, you could you can you know unravel all of that and you yeah. use that for like felted clog slippers or like we just finished a knit along. And if okay. people wanted to go scavenge yarn for another pair, I think it's great to upcycle everything. Yeah, yeah, I'm all for the upcycling. Even the avocado was part of the upcycling. Yeah. I want to know how you originally, well, you said you originally got started make, doing this, the pom-pom thing, because you bought one. Coat. Right. But do you remember when you were talking about looking on Amazon and the yeah. acrylic pom-poms, do you remember, though, in the 70s, you know, like a little piece of cardboard and you'd make a pom-pom? And yeah. then tie it, then and then yeah, you're trying never to make a little animal that. out of it. Yeah, I was good at, you make a little animal out of it. You like put googly eyes on it, little <laughs> pieces of felt for arms. Yeah, I wasn't good at it either. Like my wool pieces always just fell out. 
Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. They, you put them on your, you glue them to the back of your pencil or something. Yes. Oh yeah, that was so cute. I should make, I should try and make little ones of Poppy to put on your pencil. <laughs> For a little grade school. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, so you started, but what gave you that very first hat though? You cut yeah. up the you cut up the coat for the very first hat. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And now you could make pom poms out of this too. I could with those wool ones with the cardboard. Yeah. I well, could. they can make little pom pom maker kits now. I have but, one. I still don't do very well with it. <laughs> well, I like the upcycling idea. That's fantastic. Yeah. I haven't really made wool pom poms since way back when I was little yeah yeah might I might be better at it now I'm probably not though now you have a partner in your business as well right yeah so that's Trisha and I'm interested I want you to tell the story for the viewers about how you how you became fast friends and Trish okay so Trisha is my partner she doesn't like to be on social media but she does like to do math so we're perfect together <laughs> Okay, so Trisha and I used to work together. We actually still work together because we have full-time jobs on top of this, of course. Oh, okay, right, right. Yeah. So right. she and I worked in different offices, but we have friend, mutual friends. So a mutual friend called me and said, Trisha's having a really bad day. This is like in 2011 or 12. Maybe, no, my gosh, it's so much before that. This is like 2006. She's like, Trish is having a really bad day. Do you think you could give her a call? And I was like, okay. But I didn't really know Trisha very well, but like, okay, of course I can give her a call. So I called her. She was very upset because she was like in her late twenties and I am never going to find a boyfriend and I am never going to have someone to climb Kilimanjaro with. <laughs> Okay. So I was like, I'll climb Kilimanjaro with you. <laughs> she was like, really? And I was like, yeah, why not? So we went, we climbed Kilimanjaro. You for real went. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. This one conversation of, I'm never going to find someone to climb Kilimanjaro with. We climbed Kilimanjaro. And so the anniversary was October 13th. So two days ago, two days, That's three days. Ago. Awesome. Yeah, so we summited um, October 13th, 2007. Yeah. And we were just the two of us with our guides. We didn't go on like a big trip. Yeah. And so we became very close because we were together for more than three weeks in Africa. And you suffered together. We, like, I can't, <laughs> I can't even explain. There was well, a suffering going on. Yeah, I, I know a little about suffering in the wild. Yeah. Okay. I love, I love to go backpacking. So yes, yes, yes. You suffered together. You're bonded. <laughs> Life. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So have you continued your adventuring? So, well, of course, Trisha's married and has a son now. <laughs> of course. Um, <laughs> I have continued to go on hiking adventures. Mm. She doesn't, but I mean, she has a small child, so it makes sense. But she might later. Yeah, absolutely. When he's bigger, she totally might. Yeah. Yeah. So right now I'm stuck at home because of COVID. So I can't travel anywhere. But on March 16th, I came back from New Zealand on the day that the borders were shut down. Yeah, that was my last trip. Wow. So what, what took you to New Zealand? A similar conversation. <laughs> Somebody else said, will you come to New Zealand with me? And you said, sure. My friend said, um, I really just want to drive a Winnebago around New Zealand. And I was like, okay, let's go. <laughs> wow. So yeah. Awesome. yeah. So now I have nothing planned except next summer, I'll probably go hiking in the uh, West coast of Canada because I can stay in Canada. I've taken a, you know, several just little, like weekend, like three, four day trips, you know, backpacking this summer. And I, cause I kind of felt like hiking. I mean, even in the COVID era, hiking and backpacking and like doing your own thing out in the, like nobody's yeah. around. And I don't care for campgrounds because I don't want people that close to me. No. 
I mean, I just hiked back in there and I'll tell you, by the time you're two miles from the trailhead, there's hardly anybody, even on the business, the busiest weekend, because people don't want to work that hard. <laughs> no. no. It's like perfect yeah. COVID vacation. Yes. So what are some of your favorite things to knit besides hats that, well, you mentioned, you mentioned some of the best things to make with a limited quantity of this is hats, mittens. I would think like a really nice cowl you could get out of 125 yes. yards. I recently made a sweater that the, I ran out of yarn. I'm so upset. <laughs> I have to rip the sleeves off. It's here. I brought it so I could show you. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Look at so, the fluff. Yeah, I know, right? It's so good. But so now I have to rip the sleeves off, which because... makes sense because the sweater itself is too short oh so i think tell me if i'm wrong the sleeves are a bit big yeah and so, so I, if i reduce by like 10 stitches then i'll have more yarn at the end right <laughs> but yeah. it's this is my channel mascot he's come to visit this is, <laughs> hey this, friend this is peanut this Hi, is peanut, peanut. he's Hi, peanut Prince, Prince Peanut Pearl of Pearl Together. So cute. He was a barn. He's very fat now. A year ago, he came in from the barn. He was a barn kitty that made his way inside. Nice. And he just knows how much I love him. Yes. <laughs> I can see it. He knows. And, but when that happen. happened, my dog was so upset. He was so <laughs> jealous when Peanut came in the house. So yeah Poppy gets really jealous too I think it's the breed I don't well Poppy just gets jealous of every other dog not so much of the cat well my dog is jealous just because of the amount of attention that peanut gets <laughs> he's he's large yeah it's good it's good he's happy that is a happy cat and he sleeps now that it's getting cold he wants to be under the covers wow he comes up to me in the in the middle of the night and he'll put his face right next to my face with his whiskers yeah. and he'll like breathe in my face <laughs> <laughs> until I until I lift the covers and then he goes under. Smart. He's looking at me like, stop talking about me, mom. <laughs> he doesn't care. He does not care. What a good guy. He's happy to sit here next to the, the knitwear. Yes. Stay he's always there. really warm and he's heavy. <laughs> Sometimes I just have to put his fat ass down on the desk and let him. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very happy cat. So, what other projects do you have coming up after your bobble hat? Hmm. I just released a Christmas stocking. Oh. Actually, yeah. So it's I made a. I didn't make anything. The mill spun me <laughs> a yarn. It's fifty percent samoyed and fifty percent wool, and it's a super bulky. So it's like a pencil roving. Yes. And, so it's and, single ply. Yes. And right. so I knit, I designed a stocking around that. And so I don't have it with me. <laughs> People can see it on your website though. Yes. Or your Instagram. Yeah, it's on my Instagram too. You're right. I think that's um, that. the Instagram I think is a bit more fun because it's videos of Poppy all the time. Um, I'm going to release a new kit. Um for Twixmas. Are you familiar with this Twixmas thing? So it's in the UK. And it's the period between Christmas Day and New Year's Eve. So oh, there's so that week. Yeah. So it's like, what do you do? You sit around, you wait for New Year's to get here, and you eat, you, you continue to eat too much. You eat and you knit and you watch movies. Right. I never so, have a problem with what to do. <laughs> so I'm going to release a kit for. Twixmas that's hat and mittens and it's yeah. yeah so poppy yarn and it's mixed with a thread of cashmere oh oh <laughs> yeah oh yeah so, so people can watch your Instagram for that right yeah okay. absolutely so that'll be coming up in November okay yeah 
So you post mostly on Instagram, then if people want to follow you, that's where to do it. Yeah, I would totally recommend that. I usually post a bunch of nonsense in my stories, mostly what Poppy's up to or if something strange happens. How old is Poppy now? Six. So yeah. And so what's the lifespan normally of a Samoyed Samoyed? 12 to 15, whichever you prefer. 12, 12 to 15, 15 years. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so, so how, yeah. how how big is she? Like I'm trying to relate how big she is compared to my dog. I'm gonna pick her up. Like she's, she's probably 45 pounds, maybe? 59 pounds. She needs to go on a diet. Too many cheesies. Can you <laughs> Come here. Poppy. She's mostly fur, but she's still pretty solid. Oh yeah, she's solid. She doesn't want me to pick her up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hi, baby. It's okay. Hi, Poppy. Oh, I got the back. You're okay. Oh, she's like, no, I put my ears down. I don't love. I'm not loving this. <laughs> I'm holding you, Pop. You're safe you're okay you're beautiful yeah she's a good kid she, she mostly is. listens the other one doesn't listen at all <laughs> yes it's because he's a puppy oh she's so sweet she's so sweet does she get to sleep on the bed oh yeah of course oh yeah I'll bet <laughs> she's super warm yes so does, her does, people... does Stubbs want to sleep on the bed too then he does sometimes, but uh, I think they get overheated easily. So they stay for like 20 minutes or so, and then they leave. Yeah. What about her name? Her full name is Cherry Pop-Tart. <laughs> and then she coughed. Her, um, you're okay, come here. She, uh, her Canadian Kennel Club name is Cherry Pop-Tart. So it's oh. Poppy for short. Yeah. 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 Stubbs does not have a Canadian Kennel Club name. <laughs> just stubs so on the yarn it says poppy and the professor so tell me about the professor professor stubs <laughs> oh, okay so yeah, that, I, was, I get it okay i was trying to figure out a way to bring stubs in right. and well obviously he's a professor because it right it went with poppy so i was like professor stubs so that's his name that works yeah it's cute and then stubs stubs for short non-listener is what it is <laughs> he has a short attention span oh yeah puppies you're gonna have this new pattern coming out for christmas or yep. you said in november so but it's for that twixmas yeah yeah so i would say probably november 1st oh soon Maybe a little bit before yeah i'll release that new pattern okay. nice yeah fantastic so we'll put links all down below where people can follow you on your website where they can get this yarn and obviously you ship from canada absolutely worldwide so and i don't know i don't know how long things take but it didn't seem like it took all that long for it to get to me no so. it's actually much faster than i thought it was i sent stuff last week to the states and it arrived already so wow God. yeah that's wonderful. Yeah, I know it's really good. It's almost like the border's not closed. Karen, thanks for joining me. You're welcome. Appreciate it was so it. great to talk to you. It's so much fun. So people can go order suit like now, whenever they want. Yeah. All right. All right. Talk to you later. Okay. Have a great day. Bye.